Well, welcome everyone to this um, session called Tracing the Path of the Appium Command uh, by Rajdeep Parma. Uh, we're very glad you could join us today. And uh, without further ado, here's over to you, Justin. Uh, All right. Uh, thank you so much for, for the introduction, uh, Malika. Yeah. And I welcome everyone who are here uh, for this talk. Uh, it's unfortunate that I cannot, cannot see the faces. I usually, uh, whenever I have spoken that in, in these APM conferences, there are a lot of people around me and uh, I feel the excitement. Um, and one of the reason uh, I actually miss the physical conferences is because if this was to happen anywhere in the world, it would be Bangalore in India. And uh, <laughs> And my, there's a special affection to India because I get to visit India because I, I'm currently based out of London. And uh, when this conference happens, I get to visit to India. And uh, who doesn't want to visit on a sponsored air, air tickets, right? So ne never mind, I, I, I went to India three months ago because I knew that uh, this year conferences are going virtual. So I remember one of the incidents which happened to me uh, three months ago when I visited uh, my hometown of Jaipur. So I landed at Delhi airport and I had uh, one of my friends whom I asked to book a cab. He's, he's the owner of the cab company. He, sent me, he, he told me, I'll send you a cab with the best of his driver. And uh, indeed, uh, he proved to be the one of the best driver who drove me from Delhi to Jaipur. And... Uh, when we landed, we loaded our stuffs in the car and we moved on. Almost halfway through the journey, the, the driver pulled the car on the side and he said, uh, there's a problem. The, and basically what he meant was the car broke down and we couldn't move forward. And I was thinking like, okay, maybe instead of, we'll definitely get delayed uh, to, to next, next, our next journey. <clears throat> So I was uh, definitely not very happy, but the driver, he went out of the car, uh, opened the bonnet, did something, came back, took something from the car, probably a bottle, and then went again to the bonnet, did some more things, shut it down, and then came back and started the car, and it started working. I was very happy. So I asked him a question. You are, you are an amazing person. Uh, how did you manage to do that? Uh, he said, uh, Sir, dhanda hai, uh, karna padta hai. And what he meant basically was it's his business. He, he needs to know all these uh, things. And then I asked him, your business is, I mean, your job is to just drive a car, like to drive, a, drive to, to move people from point A to point B. Uh, you are not a car mechanic. So how do you know all these things? So he said, my job is to move people from point A to point B and also to make sure that if there is anything which stops me from doing this, I need to know how to fix it. So for, for me, it's equally important to know how to fix or how to mend some broken things in car as important as knowing how to drive the car. And that was very impressive for me. <clears throat> And that connected me because uh, um, this, this applies into the life of every professional, right? And why I'm talking about this in this APM conference. So many of you are professional uh, in, in, in the field of mobile test automation or going to be in the profession, uh, professional in, in this field. And you might have chosen various tools like probably APM, Calabash or many other proprietary tools, right? You are like the driver of my car. And then let's say if you get stuck somewhere with your tools, do you know how to fix this, how to tweak those tiny bit of things for, for, for them to make work for you? Do you also know how your things actually work? So do you know how APM works? As a beginner, when you start using APM, your complete focus is on making your test work with APM. You, your boundary is not beyond your test. But as, and more, as you want to gain more experience, like you want to be the best of the automation tester uh, from, for using APM, you start looking into, you start scratching the surface and look deep into what's happening inside, how it's working, right? So in today's session, 
for all those people who are uh, beginning to use APM and always have this curiosity that how things work, I'm going to talk about uh, this and uh, I'm going to show you uh, how it works. So welcome everyone again. My name is Rajdeep. I work at uh, a company called Bumble. I've been doing test automation for more than almost 12 years now, and I'm a contributor to APM myself, especially in the APM's uh, espresso driver. And uh, a few bits about uh, my employer Bumble. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of the best places where I've worked so far. Um, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's basically a dating platform, one of the largest one uh in the whole world we have we are we have we developed not just bumble but many other dating apps based on our platform with a huge user base and i want to uh mention a special thank you thank you to all of uh, the people who support me at bumble for uh, such events <laughs> so when i spoke about why we need to know about the things which we work with some of the reasons are so let's say you are using apm and you said your tests are not working. So what will you do? You will think that there is a bug in APM. However, most of the times the issues are not in APM, but in your test, in the configuration you have done with the APM. And if you know what changes to tweak, what configurations to tweak, because you know how APM works, you could fix your tests. Also, you could design more performant tests because when you invoke an APM command in your uh, test automation scripts, so let's say you say driver.start driver, from that point onward, there are chain of events which take place until the app actually starts up on your screen. Now, in your case, it might be the thing that out of those chain of events, some events are useless for your case. For example, building an instrumentation server again and again might not be a good idea. So if you know how APM works, you can probably skip those events. And I think especially in APM 2.0, when you can actually create the plugins, you can possibly create some plugin which can uh, skip those steps for you to make your test more performant. Also, if you know how it works, you can raise more meaningful issues in the GitHub and it will give you a sense of achievement and also recognition. And not just that, if not all of, all of this, one thing which we'll definitely do is if you know how APM works, if you, if you know how things work, basically, if you are one of those people who watch this program on discovery channel, how do they do it in which they show various factories and how, how the chocolates are produced. And at the end of the program, you feel mental satisfaction, right? So it gives you a peace of mind just by knowing how things actually work, which is amazing. <laughs> so yes, in this talk, uh, I'll talk about these things and there will be major two parts here. First, I'll take you to th through some theory and then demonstration. And uh, in theory, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about uh, various APM drivers, but in depth, I'll just talk about only APM's Android and uh, uh, Android Espresso driver, <laughs> because that's, that's my area of expertise uh, uh, in APM. But most of the things will be more or less similar for any other driver. And then I'll give you a demonstration. In the demonstration, I'll show you lots of code, but you don't need to worry about how it actually works. My intention there would be just to show you that there are some there's some code which is being called. So think of it as an abstraction that a call flows from this module to this module to that module. And I'll show you various pieces of code by putting some debuggers in the code. You don't need to exactly understand how the code structure is structured in that repository or how it works. Just know that there, that's where the call travels to and from. <clears throat> that that's the flow. Uh, you just need to track the flow. And since it's a beginner session, I'm not going to go into a, like in very depth, not in the extreme depth, but if you want me to go in depth or if you have any question related to any specific thing, you can uh, ask me at the end of the talk or in the Hangouts session, and I'll be very happy to help you with that. So it all starts with installing your APM. <clears throat> so all you will do is um, you will do is npm install minus g APM, or you'll install it using some GUI tools, but one and the same thing. Ultimately, what it ends up installing it is 
is a node js module with a server inside it and when you start your apm server uh, it basically starts uh, a http server and uh, it also has some sub modules included in it for example apm x ui test driver apm ui automator 2 driver and apm espresso driver apm x ui test drivers for ios and ui automator 2 driver and espresso to espresso driver are for android most of you already know about this so in this uh, talk we are going to uh, look at only the espresso driver however most of the things as i said are pretty much similar more or less for uh, any other driver so what this server does is it it basically is based on w3c web driver specification or uh, old old name was json wire protocol so what what does this mean when i say based on w3c specification it basically is developed in such a way that it the request and response format is adhered to that defined by w3c web driver specification so uh, it's basically implementing an interface so that makes the advantage of implementing the web driver w3c spec is if you have to develop a server which is based on the spec you just develop the server clients are already developed for you for example uh, you anyone using the web driver uh, bindings in java ruby python will be able to request from your server and you'll get the right response here so it makes it convenient so in reality this will listen this server will listen to some of the http calls and the http calls would be in the format something like this sorry i'll just uh, start uh yeah. so this is a http post request with an endpoint called element and the data will be in the format of this json where using xpath and value with the text hello so this request will go to our uh, uh, node.js server and the server will respond. So you can post on this server using any, um, any tool uh, like Postman or curl, CURL basically, or, or any, any HTTP library that you want to use. However, a more convenient way is to use language bindings. So there are official language bindings available in Ruby, Java, JavaScript, Python, Go, and, and many other languages. These are basically a meaningful and very fancy, meaningful wrappers on top of the HTTP libraries, which works as, which understands the JSON wire protocol or W3C web driver spec. And uh, it, it makes your test development pleasure. It can store the states, store the session and <coughs> And, and can help you manage uh, those things. So you don't have to worry about uh, uh, storing those by yours on your, on your own. So the next is uh, <coughs> whenever you do say driver.find element text hello using xpath hello. By the way, this code is a pseudo code uh, in, in like Ruby style there in, in Java, it would be something different, but ultimately from your client, you will say driver dot some find element. What it ends up doing is it ends up making a post request on the same element endpoint and with some JSON data, right? Now, so what happens when you uh, when you do say driver dot start driver or if you are using Java, Android driver driver equal to new Android driver. So you do this and your app starts on your device. So there's a lot, there's a lot of things happening in the background. What is happening actually? So it all starts with session creation. So whenever you do start driver command, it requests for a session and it happens this way. So your client sends, Hey, start driver. And then, uh, when you, you tell start driver client actually sends a some data on the session endpoint and that data is in form of this specific json which has capabilities and uh, in the capabilities object you have um, many capabilities here i am specifying bare minimum like i want to automate for android using espresso driver on this specific device and using my this specific 
application, which is a APK. Currently name of my APK is compose playground dot APK. So this request is then passed to APM server and APM server knows that I'm using Espresso here. So it passes this to APM Espresso driver. Now, if that was on any other driver, it would pass to any other driver. So for the UI automator too, it would pass to UI automator two driver. And same for X UI test driver. Now, here at the Espresso driver, it says, okay, I have to automate this. So what, what is the application under test? It says from the capability, it reads that the application under test is composed playground APK. Now it does a lot of things here. Once it needs gets the APK, it does many things like it finds launch her activity and package name of that application. It reassigns the application with the default keys. If it is, if you don't provide the keys, it then uh, <clears throat> forwards the ADB port from your uh, local machine to the Android device. And then also uh, installs the Espresso server. So <clears throat> in short, the major parts are not going into too much depth here, but just keep in mind that few things which it does is sign and install application under test. And it also creates a companion Espresso Server APK for the application under test. Now this companion app, Espresso Server app is created in conjunction with your application under test. It is not, it is not there by default. So if you happen to see the source code or, or, or basically when you install the APM, if you see the node modules directory of APM Espresso driver, there is the source code of a APK file, basically how to create, how to generate this Espresso Server. What APM does is, uh, what this Espresso driver does is, it changes the manifest of that Espresso server so that the instrumentation target package becomes the package name of our application under test. And it builds that app specifically for application under test. And both are signed with the same keys and installed. <laughs> and the ultimate diagram on the device side looks like this. So this specific Android device, this blue bound, this purple boundary is Android device. So in Android device, we'll have installed our application under test and also the Espresso server app here. Yeah. And both are developed. So Espresso server is, de <coughs> is developed in such a way that it is a instrumentation for our application under test. So it's like a best friend for our application under test and it knows how to, how to make changes in our application under test, how to, um, click on it, it knows how to drive the application basically because it's the instrumentation of our application under test. And then there can be other apps which Espresso server cannot interact with. However, I'm lying here, there is some degree uh, wherein Espresso server can drive other app using UI Automator 2 interfaces provided in this APK, but I'll not talk about them. So ultimately the diagram looks like this. From your client, you send request to your Node.js using JSON using W3C standard. This server then forwards all the requests uh, to Espresso server Espresso driver, which knows how to uh, uh, create the companion APK, and then. Over the ADB interface, it interacts with the device, installs both your APM and, uh, uh, instrumentation server and uh, application under test. And then once the installation is successful, over the ADB, it, it invokes an ADB command called ADB shell AM instrument, which basically what it does it is, is starts a instrumented test inside this Espresso server. And that test basically is nothing but, so imagine you are executing that instrumentation test inside this, that test starts, but it starts as part of the test, it starts a HTTP server, which is implemented using nano HTTP daemon. And uh, that server then just waits there, hangs in, starts listening for the HTTP calls. Now, if you realize in this picture, there are two HTTP server. First one is the APM server which is the primary interface for uh, testers who are using various languages. 
and the second HTTP server is running inside our device. So in your mobile device or your emulator, there is a HTTP server running. And that server listens for the HTTP call. And those calls are being sent by Espresso driver to that server. And since uh, the device is connect via, connected via ADB to send the request on this HTTP server on some port, we forward ADB port from this guy to this guy. Okay. So ultimately the request goes here, HTTP request. It says, is it, it's passed to Espresso driver. Most of the requests are just directly proxied without any action to this Espresso server. <clears throat> now you might be wondering if we have to do request from here and then from here to here, why can't we directly make a request from here to here? And the reason is uh, because some of, not all, not all the, uh, endpoints are implemented by Espresso server. Some of the endpoints are implemented by the driver. For example, if you want to get the device date time, this Espresso server doesn't provide that information because it's a simple ADB command. You don't need a server for that. So for a device and uh, date time, you ask this person and uh, APM Espresso driver simply invokes ADB command, gets the time and gives it back to you. So there's no need of this. However, for some complex command, the commands are proxied from here to here. And that's why we need a middleware here. Okay. So Rajdeep, hi, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we have two small questions. Um, one mm -hmm. is, uh, the first one is, who's listening to this session endpoint? Who's listening to this session endpoint? Yeah, so the listener to the session endpoint from the testers or client perspective is this, this thing. What happens is it is listening for test endpoint. The session endpoint is provided here. Some things are happening inside the driver. Some actions are happening on based on the session endpoint here. For example, it creates a session and creates a session ID, right? And uh, does some uh, other stuff like port forwarding. And once that is done, this driver invokes a session command here also. So there are two places where the sessions are created in, term, in case of Espresso. So there is a session created here, but this session is then bound to a session created on this server. So in the Espresso server also there is a session. And what happens is when you, after the session is created, when you say, oh, I want to find the element in this session. So the find element call goes to this and the session ID is used. And then this person knows, oh, this session ID corresponds to session ID Y on the Espresso server. So the forward, it's then forwarded with a different session ID. I'll show you in, in, a, in, in a bit in the demonstration. Right. And the second question is how do you between UI automated to and Espresso? Sorry, what's the question again? How do you choose between UI automated to and Espresso? So Espresso is uh, is better than UI Automator too, but it's a bit more technical. And uh, <clears throat> technical in the sense, it need require a bit of more setup. And it's very tightly coupled to your application under, under test, as you see in this diagram. So Espresso server and application under test are basically in one and same process. They are no two different apps. Once they get installed on your device, it behaves like one single app because they are part of the same process ID on the device. They are not those two separate processes. So to make this instrumentation work, you might need to modify your application under test. For example, if it is obfuscated, some things might not work. So you need to de uh, you need to make sure that some rules are removed. There might be some dependency uh, conflicts. So for example, Espresso server is using some uh, libraries, a lifecycle libraries, which are not of the same version as in your app under test then it won't work. You need to make sure that Espresso server is compiled using the same libraries. For that, we have got different capabilities will, which will help you do this. So uh, in terms of the power, Espresso driver is more powerful. However, it needs more technical knowledge and more uh, configuration. UI Automator 2 driver is, uh, is good if uh, if you don't want to invest a lot of time in, in terms of setup and your application doesn't need features like backdoors uh, or, or for example, the new UI framework is going to come in Compose, which probably will have more support in Espresso driver as compared to UI Automator 2.
I think that answers the question. Uh, perfect. Oh. Let's take the rest of the questions towards the end. Okay. Uh, thanks, Molly. Okay, so now <clears throat> we'll see a demo. Now, since you see three things here, client, and then there's an APM server, and then your Android device, I'll show you the code related to this. In this case, I will have a client, which will have a Ruby mine, uh, which is a test written. So this is IDE. And I'll show you a test written in Ruby. But if you want to write it in Java, feel free to go ahead and will be the same thing. You can imagine. And then for the Node.js code, I will show you the code in the Visual Studio. And uh, for the Android device, I will use Android Studio to show the code. So basically, I'll have a Ruby test, which will be the simple APM test to start an application. That code will invoke basically over the HTTP invoke some code in the JavaScript side of Node.js. I'll show you that code in Visual Studio code. This code will then compile an APK and then start sending requests over HTTP inside that tiny Espresso server, which I, I was talking about. And the code base of that tiny Espresso server, I'll load in the Android Studio. I'll then put a debugger here and here to show you that things are actually traveling from one place to another place. So let's actually see it happening. However, one point, there's a, <clears throat> if you are a beginner and you don't know much of coding, uh, it's fine. Don't worry if you don't understand the code. In next 10 minutes, it will be virtually impossible for me to explain the code base for the whole APM Espresso driver, APM Espresso server, and the APM code itself. Because I, I till date, even I don't understand it completely. There, is, there are a lot of moving parts. So it's not just uh, JavaScript, but also Java and Kotlin inside the Espresso server. And a uh, lot, uh, lot of driver codes, which is actually in the sub modules, which I cannot actually load. So if you don't understand the code, don't worry. I'll show you something. All you need to know is on the higher level, there is a call which is going from this place to that place and that place. And while you know in theory that it goes, it is much better to connect using a debugger in some uh, IDE to see, oh, it actually stuck here. So it it probably will, uh, will, will be more connecting with all of you. Okay. So let's see. So as I said, I have a simple test and the test is written in Ruby. Here you can see I'm, I'm creating a method which is going to give me capabilities and I'm going to create APM driver using those capabilities. There is no fancy stuff here. It's just a simple APM test, which almost everyone has seen before. And then I do driver.start driver. And ultimately I go into a debugger. This pry binding.pry is a debugger. Okay. And then I have an APM server running here. <laughs> Version one, two, one. Yeah. And then I will run my test here using uh, Ruby demo compose.rb. That's the file name where I've got my APM test. Um, and then I've got uh, Visual Studio code where I have loaded the source code of APM Espresso driver. And you can see there's a JavaScript code, which actually um, there's a file called driver.js. Don't worry about it. Why this file? Why? But just see that this, this, this is the source code of APM. And since it's a very beginner's level demonstration, um, don't try to go into too much depth of the method syntax. If you don't know JavaScript, that's perfectly fine. I'll explain that there's a method called create session, which gets invoked when you actually want to create a session. So maybe I can put a debugger here, right? And, uh, and ultimately this, when the session is being created, it will go to a, to your Android device where the Espresso server uh, stays. And that Espresso server is built using this repository called Espresso server. And the code base of this actually lies inside the installation of your uh, node module. And I can actually show you this. So in the node module where APM is installed, so you expand the APM. And in the APM, if you go to node module, you will see lots of node modules installed by APM. And sorry, 
one of them is apm espresso driver the apm espresso driver if you expand the code base there is espresso server so there are code base for javascript things like which which i showed you in the visual studio i have actually loaded the same code in the visual studio and there is a thing called espresso server and if you see there's a build.gradle file and the app folder and this is the source code for apm espresso server which is which actually ultimately ends up building an apk file so all these so things are provided in the node module and that's how when you create a session the app is being built okay so one of the questions previously was how who who listens for the session so i said the session is the call for session is being listened by this node uh, module for apm so let's try to create the session as i said you don't really need a, a client library to do that and, and i'll show you using the postman so i have my apm server on port number 4723 uh, which is this one listening here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a session on this so i'll just as i said the session is being created using a post request on the session endpoint which is here using this specific cap uh, uh, data json data so i'm sending post data this way and i say send and uh, you see some things have started happening here and it's still sending the request request is being uh, entertained here doing some things as i said these are the series of events which take place here and you probably can read the logs there was a talk in one of the apm conference previous conference which are which was about related to mining the logs and everything which happens during session create creation is logged here in this logs so okay my session has been created and uh, and if you see here it gives me a session id now you can do a whole lot of things with this session id for example uh if you go to w3c uh, <coughs> dot org and see the web driver specification you can see what you can do using session id so after creating the session id basically one of the thing you can do is probably you can get uh, the window rectangle right so so using the session id and this endpoint you could basically get the device window rectangle so i can do the same localhost wd hub session and my session id here and uh, window and rec that's the endpoint if i hit it i get the height and width of my window now why i'm showing you this is just to show that that you can do all these things without using your client libraries but it's better to use them because they hold a lot of state for you anyway i i'll restart my apm server and this time i'll i'll take you through this again from end to end using using my ruby mine to javascript to an android source code so here i'm doing start driver and uh, start driver will send a request for creating session on my javascript code base i'm calling it code base but actually it's a server and <coughs> i'll start a debugger here you can see the debugger has started so here i'm start going to start my test i press enter and as soon as i print press enter nothing happens in here uh, and and i'm stuck in the debugger here so create session has got a debugger here i'll move on playing this it will say espresso driver version which then it logs here or if i play so it says espresso driver version here 1453 and then gets the launch activity package name and there's a lot of thing i'll just move forward because uh, this code can change any time we keep changing this but i have put debugger at main points like it now forwards the port here as part of this command adb forward port and the port forwarding is necessary because we want to reach to the server running in the device and the only way is using adb port, port forwarding if you want to go through wired connection and then once that's done we are okay so since i was in the debugger for for very long it timed out right 
So that's another thing. Sometimes, you know, some, some things are taking time and you see what's happening wrong and you know that it timed out after 2000 or uh, 20,000 milliseconds because I waited more than 20 seconds here. So let's do this again. This time I'll fast forward things. Yeah. <clears throat> so what this doing is now is uh, hopefully building the Espresso server APK. Now the output of that build is not logged because uh, I think yeah. I think I'm in the debugger again. So install APK and now it's building the APK. So here you can see oh, I lost this. Yeah, here you can see it's now building the okay. Now starting the instrumentation. So copying the template, which is basically the source code. After copying the source code, it's going to it built the the app using this Gradle command. So here is the place where we actually build that S, that tiny Espresso Server APK using Gradle. And once that is built, this is the output from Gradle. And once that is built, we install the app. And after installing the app, we start the ADB shell AM instrumentation command, which is highlighted here. And uh, after starting the instrumentation, it starts a server. And then we post that request on the server. Now, if you carefully notice, this 8304 is not the port on which I started my APM server. This is the port on which Espresso server inside the device is running. Right? So that's where it's saying, oh, is the server up? And it says no, no. So it tries for a few times, ultimate, and ultimately it gets the response with 200. Okay, that okay, the server is up. Like if you if you call this endpoint yourself, it gets your ID, which means the server is up. <clears throat> okay, so that covers our flow from uh, uh, sorry, from Ruby Mine from here to Visual Studio Code, and it actually went here did something, installed it, came back here, but we didn't see this, this part yet. So we will now see this part. Since my session is created, I'm here in a debugger. So what I'll do is now, I'll, I'll show you what happens when you invoke some command. For example, you can say uh, driver.manage.window.size, right? And I'll clear my, yeah. So when you do this thing, it gives you a window size with the dimension. Now, how, how this window size is being calculated? Who does that calculation? Is it the uh, APM server? Is it the server? I mean, is it just this Node.js code? Is it this code or is this code? Let's have a look. So the best way to look for that is in the logs. So you see between these things, which is the starting arrow and ending arrow, between these two arrows is the all uh, logs of a specific command. For example, I wanted to get the window rectangle. This whole block is related to that between these two arrows. So what we end up doing is we end up sending a window rect request. Uh, this is the endpoint, yeah, which I showed you in the browser. Ultimately, that ends up going to. Uh, so yeah, I also talked about uh, in one of the answers of, of a question that the session ID is there are two session IDs. So if you see the session ID here for, for the client is 16F, starting with 16FP. However, when you uh, proxy it, the session ID gets mapped. So this session ID 16FB gets mapped to the session ID E89 because there, there's, there are two sessions. One is on the APM uh, Node.js server and one is on the Espresso server inside your device. So the request from here gets proxied to your device with this rectangle. Yeah. <clears throat> so to, to this endpoint, sorry. And the session IDs are both different. Now let's see how it actually, uh, when I see this driver.manage.window size and it gives me window size, I'll see who exactly executes this code. So your Node.js server basically proxied uh, proxies this to your Espresso server in the device. And the Espresso server has got lots of endpoints to handle it. For example, uh, there's a there's a router dot, the, now this is the uh, uh, Espresso server AP, uh, app, Android app source code. 
So there is a there is a router. There is a router class which has got all the information of which place, which method to invoke when you get a request on that specific endpoint. For example, we were looking at uh, window rect. So what this root root map says, uh, whenever you get a request post re a get request on this window uh, rec endpoint, you need to invoke this get window rec uh, uh, handler. So I have put a debugger in this get window rec handler, and uh, I'll basically connect a debugger here. Don't worry if you don't understand the code again. You just need to understand that things are moving from one place to another. Uh, and when I invoke this command, I'm here. Sorry, Rajdeep, just a small reminder. We have less than five minutes remaining. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> so display matrix. And then, uh, so yeah, I, again, it went to the handler, which is window rect handler. And then you can see, I mean, I can just put a whole lot of say things here and then play. And then, yeah, basically still here. Uh oh, sorry. I should have <laughs> stop, stop all. Okay. Connect back to the debugger. Okay. So the debugger was here and it went back to the, uh, to the console with the data back. And you can see here. The response was 200 okay with the height and width yeah so <clears throat> anyway so uh, that was uh, it basically uh, the code code base is huge uh, it's just a starting point for you as a beginner to know that these are the things happening so that if you know that there's an issue in this command, you know what place to look into. And once you know where to look into, you can look deep into that place. So in summary, uh, just remember that there are many moving pieces in APM. It's not just one tool. There are many things in the call flows from one module to another, to another, and ultimately things happen somewhere deep inside in some uh, different module. And uh, be like my cab driver, uh, who is uh, who's not just the driver of the car, but also knows how to tweak stuffs if his car breaks down and ultimately you can carry on with the journey forward. So thank you very much uh, for uh, joining me here today and uh, hope you'll all have a nice day. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask me. And I see there are a lot of questions. <laughs> Are there questions in chat? Chat. Hi. So, um, uh, we're running out of time actually. So, uh, thank you so much, Rajdeep, for sharing your experience and this demo with us. It was uh, extremely informative, and I hope everyone uh, enjoyed it. And thank you to the audience for being such a wonderful audience. Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you so much, Rajdeep. Thank you. Uh,